One of the fundamental concepts of environmental engineering is the mass or material balance. It's that the accumulation rate of stuff inside a control volume is equal to what is added by flowing in to the control volume minus what is removed by outflow plus anything that is added from sources within the control volume minus things that are lost. We'll draw our control volume here. It's well mixed, so we put in a fan. The accumulation is how much of the stuff changes over time in the box, DMDT. It can come into the box via inflow with some volume flow rate Q and some concentration C coming into the box. It can leave via the outflow, which will usually have the same volume flow rate Q and some concentration C. Now that C is the same as the C that's inside the box. It's well mixed. So if I stick my hand into the box and anywhere I grab out a sample of the, the air, it's going to contain concentration C in it. And so that's what's leaving the box. We can also have sources like emissions within the box. And we can have losses due to reactions or deposition on the surfaces. Mathematically, our m dot is equal to the change in mass over time, dm dt. I'm going to rewrite mass as the concentration times the volume because I'm going to have terms on the right hand side which are concentration. So our inflow is Q times C in. This is all in mass per time units. Our outflow is minus Q times C. We'll represent the sources as plus S and the losses as minus L. So S. Our sources S are in units of mass per time, so grams per second. And these could be things like emissions or products of reactions. And then we have can have different loss processes, L also in units of grams per second. And this could be deposition, which involves gravitational settling or sticking to surfaces, and also loss by reaction. We'll apply this um, in air quality engineering most frequently as a uh, box model, uh, which is a model of an airshed. An airshed is some area where the air is can be reasonably well represented using a single concentration over that area. So let's say that we have our box. I'm going to draw it in three dimensions here, and this is a city. So we have houses in here. We have factories. We have cars, there's some concentration in the box. We have wind hitting one side of the box at velocity u, and then there's some concentration entering C in. And then downwind, we have that same wind velocity and then we have some concentration that's leaving. We're going to add some dimensions to this box where the height is h, the length is l, and the width is w. u is equal to our wind speed. So that's in meters per second. And 
let me add a term E, which is our emission rate, or the source term, which will be mass per time, or grams per second. At steady state, there's no accumulation. So the situation looks the same now as it does 10 minutes from now, as it does an hour from now. And our mass accumulation, m dot, is equal to zero. So then we can take our mass balance equation and say zero is equal to q times c in minus q times c plus e. We have our emissions. Uh, we're going to assume that there's no losses. We weren't told anything about that. Now q, we don't have directly. We're given the velocity, but remember that the velocity times the cross-sectional area, u times a, is equal to the volume flow rate. So we can rewrite q as u times the cross-sectional area, which is w times h, and then we still have cn, minus Q, which again is U times W times H times C plus E. And now I can rearrange this and solve for C, the steady state concentration in the box, which is equal to U times W times H times CN plus the emission rate, all divided by u times w times h. And so this is really, if I divide through by uwh, this is cn plus e over uwh. And we can see this applied in this example problem. A city has the following description. The width is five kilometers, the length is 15 kilometers, the wind velocity is three meters per second, the height is 1,000 meters. Uh, the height comes from, it's called the mixing depth, and it, there's not, it means there's kind of a, like a lid on the box that mixing happens up to a height of 1,000 meters and doesn't go, uh, doesn't mix much beyond that, and that has to do with meteorological conditions. Um, the upwind or background concentration of CO is 5 micrograms per cubic meter, so this is our CN. The emission rate per unit area is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 grams per second per square meter. What is the concentration of CO over the city? First of all, we need to wrestle with this emission rate, which is not just a straight up mass per time, but it's a mass per time per area. We can assume that that is the, the land surface area. And so given E per unit area, we need to find E in grams per second. So it's just a matter of multiplying by the area. So we take our emission rate of four times 10 to the minus six grams per second per square meter, and we multiply by the area of the land surface, which is L times W. So this is four times 10 to the minus six grams per second per square meter times the length, which is 15 kilometers or 15,000 meters, times the width, which is five kilometers or 5,000 meters. And this gives me an emission rate of 300 grams of carbon monoxide per second. Now we can apply the, bo the box model. Where C is equal to Cn plus E over UWH. C in is our upwind background concentration, and that is five micrograms per cubic meter. I'm gonna write that as five times 10 to the minus six grams per cubic meter. 
plus our emission rate, which is 300 grams per second, divided by our U, which is 3 meters per second, times W, which is 5 kilometers or 5,000 meters, times H, which is 1,000 meters. And I get 2.5 times 10 to the minus fifth grams per cubic meter. We should put this into some more reasonable units. Um, since the upwind background concentration was given in micrograms per cubic meter, that would be a good place to go. So our conversion is 10 to the six micrograms per gram. And we get 25 micrograms per cubic meter.